In this video, we have a javelin that's thrown from a height of 1.8 meters at an angle of 48 degrees to the horizontal with a speed of 26 meters per second. We first of all need to find the time when the javelin is at its greatest height. Okay, so let's draw a little diagram so that we can visualize what's going on here. So the javelin is thrown uh, from a height of 1.8 meters. So from there, say, and it will have this kind of shape of uh, trajectory where this is 1.8 and we've got an angle of 48 degrees. Okay, so there's our 48 degrees with an initial speed of 26 meters per second. Okay, so we first of all need to find the time when the javelin is going to be at its highest point. Okay, so let's break this down into X and Y components. So X and Y, and I've sued that for both. Okay, right. So what do we know? Well, we know that there's no acceleration in the x direction, and we know the acceleration for y is minus 9.8 for the vertical component. Now, uh, the initial velocity we know is 26, or well, the initial speed is 26, so the uh, component uh, for the horizontal component for the velocity will be 26 cosine 48. And the vertical component will be 26 sine 48. OK? Now, um, I could write in the initial velocity, uh, the initial displacement here, OK? But really, what I want to do is I want to keep that in mind um, as I build in the equations, OK? Rather than putting it in here. Because if I put it in here, I'm going to assume that s is always. Uh, 1.8, for example, for the vertical displacement. Um, and that's not the time that I'm looking for. So I'm looking for the time when the javelin is at its greatest height, so its vertical uh, velocity by that point will be zero. Okay. So I need to really look at that height there. Okay. I need to use that information. So, um, I'm looking for an equation that has the uv, the a, and really I want to find um, the time, okay? So, that di initial displacement will come into, t into it in a moment, okay? So, uv, a, and I want t, so I could use equation number one. So, equation number one would say v equals u plus a t. So 0 is equal to 26 sine 48 plus a times t, so minus 9.8t. Now you might be wondering, well, why haven't I taken into account that we're actually higher up um, initially? Well, that's because if I just draw a line horizontally across this diagram, uh, the time it takes for the particle to get from there to there would be precisely the same as if I just... Uh, was dealing with the projectile problem that looked like that. Okay, It's going to take exactly the same amount of time. It doesn't matter how high up it actually starts. So I can rearrange this just to get t, and that will be the answer. Okay. So the fact that I was a little high up, higher up doesn't make any difference. So I need to make sure my calculator is in degrees. So we've got 26 times sine of 48 and then I need to divide that by 9.8. And we get 1.97 seconds, OK? Or um, 2.0 seconds uh, to two significant figures because of our gravity, OK? So that's our answer to part A. Now, part B is asking, what is the total horizontal distance the javelin covers? OK, so let's have a think about this one. 
Now, if I just rub that out, because we don't want the velocity to be zero anymore. OK, so what am I going to need to find for that? Well, I probably want to find uh, the time when I am at that point, And that should allow me to find the horizontal displacement. OK, so really, I want to find the time at which the vertical displacement is zero. So I want the vertical displacement to actually be zero. OK, and I want to find the time. Now, the S, U and A with time, so S, U, A and T would be equation number three. OK. Now, this is where we're going to have to be a little bit more careful, OK? Because if I just have s as um, 0 here, then what's going to happen is that I'm actually going to find this time here, OK? Because of the time at which I hit this point all the way along, and not this point here. I need to take that 1.8 into account. So. The S is 0. We've got U times T, so 26 sine 48 times T, plus a half AT squared, OK? So minus uh, 4.9 T squared, OK? Now, this isn't quite uh, the full equation. Because if you think about if t was 0 into that, if you put t is 0 into that, what you'll get is 0. t is 0 is the solution. However, when t is 0, I don't get a displacement of 0. Actually, I've got a vertical displacement of 1.8. Okay? So if we were writing in that this s is equal to this equation, well, this doesn't work. This isn't quite right. So I need to add in that extra vertical uh, height, the 1.8, and now I can put this equal to 0 to solve this quadratic equation. Okay, I need the displacement of 0 on this quadratic. So what I can do from there is I can then type uh, this equation into my calculator to get the solutions. So going to the quadratic solver, the uh, coefficient of the x squared is minus 4.9. Uh, then we've got 26 times sine of 48, and which is 19.321. Then we've got this 1.8 on the end. And we get values of 4.03. I'll write a few more decimal places. And t is minus 0.0. 0.9105, etc. But clearly that one uh, doesn't make any sense. Okay, we can't have negative time. So the time in question is 4.03427 uh, seconds. So now I want to find the displacement, the horizontal displacement at that time. So I've got the 4.03427 going in there. And I want to find the displacement. So I'm going to use equation number 3 again. So S is equal to U times T. So 26 cosine 48 times by 4.03427. Um, and then plus a half AT squared. OK. Well, A is 0. So it's just that, right? So we've got... Uh, 26 times cosine 48 times by 4.03427. And I make that 70.2 or 70 metres to two significant figures. OK? And so that's how we can solve this problem.